Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 12, and it is entitled Instantaneous Velocity and Instantaneous Acceleration. We've already discussed average velocity and average acceleration. Recall that average velocity equals the total displacement divided by the total time, and average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time interval. Now when it comes time to talk about instantaneous velocity and instantaneous acceleration, these time intervals will be shrunk down to become very small instants. Many times we'll be examining motion graphs to calculate these quantities. So here's a motion graph you saw before in Lesson 10, in which we looked at average velocity and average acceleration. You'll recall that given a position versus time graph, to find the average velocity, we chose two points separated by a time interval on the graph and found the slope of the line between those two points, because the slope of the line on an x versus t graph is the velocity. So for instance, if we wanted to find the average velocity between the times 20 and 30 seconds, then I'd go to the graph and I'd select these points and calculate the slope. At time t equals 30 seconds, the position of the object looks like it's about 16 meters. And at time t equals 20 seconds, the position of the object looks like it's about 6 meters. To find the average velocity on this time interval, take the difference in the positions and divide it by the difference in the time. So this would be 16 meters minus 6 meters, and I would divide that by 30 seconds minus 20 seconds. 16 minus 6 is equal to 10 meters, divided by 10 seconds, and I end up with 1 meter per second. So that's to say that the average velocity between time 20 and 30 seconds is about 1 meter per second. We know how to do that. Now, we want to examine the velocity at some instant in time. I claim that between times 20 and 30 seconds, the velocity is changing all the time. You can see that because the graph is curved. Sometimes it's less than one meter per second. Sometimes it's more than one meter per second. There may be instants in time in which the velocity is exactly equal to one meter per second. But the idea is that for most of the time interval, the instantaneous velocity is not equal to the average velocity. The velocity is continuously changing. For those of you in calculus who've studied derivatives, you can see right away what's going to happen. We say that the instantaneous velocity is equal to the time derivative of the position on this position versus time graph. Now, we've seen what happens if we let our time interval equal 10 seconds. That's what we've sketched on this graph now. But now I want to shrink the time interval until it's very small and centered on the time, say, t equals 25 seconds. We want to look at what happens at that instant in time. Let me erase these previous calculations here, and let's shrink our time interval from time, say, 23 seconds to 27 seconds. Now what I see is that at time 23 seconds, the position is, say, 7.5 meters. And at the time t equals 27 seconds, the position is about 11 meters. So now let's figure out what the velocity is at that point. I'm going to use my formula x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1 for the average velocity. I'm going to put in the numbers, and when I calculate that, I get 0.875 meters per second. That may be more representative of the actual velocity at t equals 25 seconds, but I've still done this over a finite interval of time. I want to figure out what is the instantaneous velocity at the time exactly 25 seconds. So let me erase this stuff, and let's go exactly to 25 seconds. If I continue to shrink the time interval, limiting this time interval, letting the center of the time interval remain at 25 second point, but making the time interval smaller and smaller until I make it so small I have essentially a single point on the graph at time t equals 25 seconds, what I claim is that when the shrinking process is over, I can represent the slope of the line at that point as the tangent to the graph. Now if I want to calculate what is the instantaneous velocity, I find the slope of this tangent line. I sketch myself a tangent line, then I find two points that are on that tangent line and figure out what 
are the times and the positions at those points. The lowest point here on this tangent line is at 15 seconds, and the position is 0 meters. On the other hand, at this later time, which looks like it's just below 45 seconds, let's call it 44 seconds, the position is equal to 25 meters. So now, if I want to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is, then I find the slope between those two points. So now I go to make this calculation. My x2 minus x1, 25 meters minus 0 meters, divided by the time interval, 44 seconds minus 15 seconds. So at time t equals 25 seconds, I get that the instantaneous velocity is about 0.862 meters per second. What about the instantaneous velocity at a different time? Say at t equals 30 seconds. Well, I'd go to the graph at t equals 30 seconds. I would sketch myself a tangent line, and I'd go through the same process of calculation. It looks like the slope of the graph is going to be steeper at this point. Here I have at time 20 seconds a position of 0 meters, and at time looks like 36 seconds, then I have a position of 25 meters. So at time t equals 30 seconds, then I have that the instantaneous velocity is given by that formula, and now I feed in the numbers. Oops, this is 36 seconds. And for this situation, I get that the speed, the instantaneous velocity, is 1.56 meters per second. Ultimately, you have to make a judgment about what the best tangent line looks like. You just have to do the best you can. Making your tangent line just touch, but not intersect the graph at more than one point. On the AP exam, you'll get some leeway in your judgment. Your calculation, though, should be pretty close to everybody else's calculation if you sketched a pretty reasonable tangent line. Let's try some practice problems. Here's an example. The graph of position versus time for an object moving in one dimension is shown. What's the object's instantaneous velocity at t equals 30 seconds? What's the object's instantaneous velocity at t equals 45 seconds? At what time is the object not moving? And what is the position of the object when the object is not moving? Well, let's go through this process again. To answer question A, I go to the time t equals 30 seconds, and I sketch a tangent line, and I find the slope of that tangent line. There's my judgment about what a reasonable tangent line at t equals 30 seconds looks like. Let me find the time and positions. Now let me find the slope of that line. The instantaneous velocity is going to be the slope of that line, and so now I'm going to feed in the numbers. Now I'll put it in my calculator. You see I got a little bit different number here than I did for this same graph in the previous calculation. That's because my judgment of the slope of the tangent line was a little bit different, but it should be close enough. Now part B. We want to do the same thing for 45 seconds. So I go to the 45 second point, which is right here, and I sketch myself a tangent line for that. Now I'm going to pick two points on the line. Notice that the slope of this one is going to be negative which indicates that the object's moving in the opposite direction. Now I feed everything into my slope formula. Now I put in the numbers, and now pull out my calculator. I find that the instantaneous velocity is negative 1.54 meters per second at the time, 45 seconds. Part C, when was the object not moving? Well, not moving means the object has zero velocity, which means that on a position versus time graph, I've got to find a point at which the slope of the graph is going to be zero. If I look up here at this point right there, it looks to me like at that point the slope of the graph is zero. And so that occurs right at the time, it looks to me like, at about 37 seconds. And part D, at what position was the object when it was not moving, it looks to me like its position was right at 20 meters. Let's try another example. This graph gives a plot of the velocity versus time for an object moving along a straight line. A, what is the instantaneous acceleration when t is equal to 20 seconds? B, what was the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 60 seconds? C, at what time was there no acceleration? And D, is there a time when the object is moving but isn't accelerating? If slow, when is it? And how fast is the object moving? during that time. All right, now notice that we have a velocity versus time graph in this situation. 
If we're looking for instantaneous acceleration on a velocity versus time graph, we're going to be looking for the slope of the graph at the particular point in question. And in part A, the point in question is at t equals 20 seconds. So now I have a v versus t graph, and at 20 seconds, I want to find the slope of that graph. So I draw myself a tangent line to the graph at that point, and then I calculate the slope of that line, just like we did for a position versus time graph to get instantaneous velocity. So there's my judgment as to a reasonable tangent. Now I've got to find the times and velocities at the points on that tangent line. So there's my judgment. Now let's go and figure out what the slope of that tangent line is. Now I'll feed in the numbers, and I'll feed them into my calculator. I get that the average acceleration is just below 0.57 meters per second squared at time t equals 20 seconds. Now we want to do it for time t equals 60 seconds. So I'll go through this same process, sketch a tangent line, find two points on that tangent line, and now write down the formula for the instantaneous acceleration. And now feed in the numbers, and now feed the numbers into the calculator. This average acceleration is negative because I have a negative slope of my tangent line. Part C, at what times is there no acceleration? Again, no acceleration occurs when the slope of the tangent line for a velocity versus time graph is zero. It looks to me that that's going to occur right up here at this point, and it looks like that there's a time interval here during which it occurs. The slope of the tangent line up at this first point looks something like that, and it looks like that that occurs right about t equals 48 seconds, and it looks like that the tangent line between these points right here is also zero between 90 and about 105 seconds. So that answers part C. Part D says, is there a time when the object is moving but isn't accelerating? And I can see that that occurs at this time t equals 48 seconds. The object is moving, and we know it's moving because over here I can read its speed looks like it's plus 38 meters per second. Now, down here between 90 and 105 seconds, the object is stationary because it doesn't have any velocity at all. So the only time when the object is moving but not accelerating is at the time of about 48 seconds, and the speed that the object has then is 38 meters per second. So. In this lesson, what we've done is we've looked at instantaneous velocity and instantaneous acceleration. To calculate instantaneous velocity, if we're given a position versus time graph, we go to the point in question, the time in question during which we're interested in finding the instantaneous velocity, and we sketch a tangent line and calculate the slope of that tangent line. Likewise, for velocity versus time graph, we calculate a slope for a tangent line at the point in question where we're interested in finding the instantaneous acceleration. So for this lesson, that's it.